Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Emmanuel Avina, who's the president of Avina Financial Group. Emmanuel, welcome to the program. Hey, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, you're welcome. I'm excited to talk about you uh, with you because I know that when we talk about finances, it kind of makes people start thinking, uh, get this little pit in their stomach and like, oh, <laughs> A, I don't know what to do. B, I know I should be doing something that I'm not doing. C, um, just give me some tips and tricks and, and, uh, and that's wonderful. So I, I really love when we talk finances because it is such a broad topic. So you focus on some really specific things. And before we get into that, like Social Security, drawdown strategies, um, give us a little bit of background on yourself and then what led you to start your firm. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do that. So um, I have a very linear story in that I knew what I wanted to do at a very early age. Uh, as best as I can remember, I was 12 years old when I wanted to become uh, a financial professional or I wanted to help people with retirement. Uh, I always tell people it was between that and a doctor. I really wanted to be a doctor first, but it turns out that I'm a little bit squeamish when it comes to the sight of blood. So that <laughs> threw doctor out and, uh, and really put financial uh, professional at the forefront. So um, I started doing that. I went to uh, college for that. I went to university for that, got my four-year degree in finance, and then received all my uh, designations and, and licenses that are required to be a financial professional. And I, I got started in the industry in 2007, which was fantastic because 2008 happened shortly after yeah. I became a financial professional. So, you know, it's in those moments uh, like 2008 where we really learn a lot. And so I am very thankful that uh, I got started in the business when I did because I feel like it um, really, really grew my expertise and grew my knowledge base in terms of, you know, how to help people in retirement, and especially through a real big bear market like that. So um, I've been doing it ever since, and it's it really is a, a passion of mine to help people reach retirement because, in my view, it's 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 probably one of the top three American dreams. You know, it's to buy a home, maybe start a family, and retire. You know, those are sort of the yeah. three, uh, you know, um, pillars, if you will, of the American dream. So I'm, I'm I'm I feel very honored to have the opportunity to help with one of those. Well, and you know, I almost would think that the financial pillar of that, you know, of that explanation you just gave is probably one of the ones that is the murkiest, grayest, and most confusing because, <laughs> you know, you, you can call up a construction foreman and go, help me build a house. And he's like, cool, here's some two by fours and let's get some blueprints <laughs> out. But the financial aspect of Oh my goodness. Um, you know, at when do I start? And I've got kids in college and how do I deal with and then what about retirement? When should I retire? Can I retire at all? Will I run out of money in retirement? So I just really <laughs> um sympathize and empathize with your plight there, which is people need this and if and you can make such a huge difference in people's lives by being that guide. You know, you're you're the one coming alongside to go, you know what? Been there, done that. Let me tell you what I learned. Let me tell you what how this can apply to your life. And 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 you told me your goals and dreams. And here's some things to consider. So I really think that is a really spectacular approach. So do you have specifics that you work with your clients on, or um, you know, is it all things financial, or are there specific elements that you tend to specialize in? Yeah, realistically, what, what we've developed over over these last 14 years is sort of a process, and, and what we call this process is the retire with more process. And I have to be very specific here and say this retire with more does not necessarily mean more money, although that may be an ancillary benefit from our process, but um, it, it's not necessarily a guarantee that it will you will have more money in retirement, but rather you're going to have more of what you want because when you really think about it, you know, retirement is uh, the freedom to do more of what you want with who you want to do it with. 
And yeah. so our process, our proprietary process is basically five steps that we take all of our clients through to help them reach retirement. You know, and you said something that's very interesting that I share with clients when I meet with them the first time, because as you said, sometimes there's a little nerves. They're entering a stage of life that's got a lot of more question marks than answers. And, and the reason for that is, um, you know, Malcolm Gladwell has a book called Outliers. And in it, he says it takes 10,000 hours uh, of practice, right, to become an expert in an area. And when you think about it, most people, as they enter retirement, it's their first time ever doing it, right? So yeah. it's their first time filing for Medicare. It's their first time filing for Social Security. It's their first time having to think of their retirement assets as income producing assets instead of just a saving asset. And so those are the areas that we really walk our clients through from Medicare to Social Security filing to uh, reviewing their pension um, to making sure that their income is going to outlast them and it's going to keep pace with inflation and all of those things that w that uh, and, uh, eventually will allow the, the our clients to retire with more of what they want, less stress, more peace of mind. And that's really what our focus is on an, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, and it makes me think of this, and I know you didn't say, you know, a, a three-legged stool, but let's think about, you know, <laughs> pillars or or sure. foundation. There are certain, you know, decisions financially that people make that might bolster and solidify that foundation and some that might make it crumble. And I feel like um, so Security is one of those because I've heard it said, and you can confirm this, but I've heard it mm -hmm. said that making your Social Security decisions are irrevocable. When you make the decision, that's it. You can't go back and erase it and go, no, 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 what I meant was, so now that, so <laughs> I think that if that is the case, that becomes a really big leg of that financial stool to make sure you've got it done right and you're maximizing all of that for your financial future, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a giant decision. I'd say in almost all cases, there are some rare cases in which you can make some adjustments, but in almost all cases, once you've filed, once you've set course on, on that Social Security journey, you're pretty much locked into it. And it is, I mean, I love the term that you used. It is foundational income. And what I mean by that is, is really your retirement builds off of that. It's sort of your first uh, stream of re retirement, but also even, even beyond that is when you think about it, it's a guaranteed income stream that is inflation protected and fully backed by the U.S. government. So when you say those things, you go, whoa, you know, Social Security is actually an excellent tool, and there, I yeah. mean, I could go on and on about it, but it's such an excellent and important tool for retirement planning because you want to get it right. You want to make and sure let's, that you Let's pick apart money. inflation protected because I think that a lot of people um, hear that and go, oh, wow, um, the prime interest rate went down or up or this went down or up, and now my CDs aren't performing the way they used to or my whatever vehicle. But if Social Security benefits are inflation protected, that kind of gives me like a little uh, a comfort there. How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So every year, the Social Security Administration will determine what the cost of living adjustment is. You may hear the term COLA, a cost of, mm -hmm. of living adjustment. And, and essentially what that is, is they'll look and see what the price of goods have increased by and proportionately um, increase your Social Security benefit. So generally speaking, in most years, you will receive a pay bump. I could think of years like 2008, for example, or 2009, rather, um, where, where there wasn't a cost of living adjustment. But that happens very, very rarely. And the only reason why that happened. Yeah, is is because the the there was basically no cost of of uh, increase of our cost of goods, but virtually every other year or most other years, you receive that that increase. It's like a it's like a pay raise, like a guaranteed pay raise. If you think of when you know in your working years, you know most people at most companies, you get a cost of living adjustment, generally two to three percent, something of that nature. And so this is similar to that in that the Social Security Administration will increase. So it's, it's a really, again, a foundational income piece to your retirement because it does have that feature, and it is guaranteed by the U.S. government. So 
when you hear about um, when you think about retirement, at, you know, at people at certain ages are like, oh, okay, I'll, I need to, uh, you know, think about that. And then they get to another age and they're like, I guess I better think about it sooner. And obviously, <laughs> the sooner the better. But yeah. when you start thinking about, okay, retirement and what that mm-hmm. should and could look like, and then now let me, you know, dial in on Social Security. I guess when I turn X age, then I just need to trigger and check the box and, and say, start sending me benefits. But it's not that easy, right? I mean, there's a lot more that goes into when you should claim and how and all of these things. And of course, this could be a four hour master class, but uh, give us like a thumbnail sketch of some of the considerations to think about where you then would need to apply it to your own financial picture and maybe get some uh, financial professional to maybe run some software analysis or, you know, give you some options to make sure that you're dialing that in the right way so that you don't make a mistake. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's two common, you know, tips and or tricks to consider when you're when you're looking at filing. And I think um, one of them that is can be a very useful tool. This would be for any of your married listeners that are looking to uh, or approaching retirement age. Is um, there is the opportunity, for example, uh, let's say there's a, a, a husband and a wife, and um, the husband's Social Security income is, is supposed to be less than the wife's. Um, what can happen is, and let's say the wife continues to work, the husband could file as early as age 62 on his own earnings record. And then when he turns full retirement age, which generally is between 66 and 67, um, you could then file what's called a spousal benefit, which is approximately 50% of your spouse's benefit. So think of it this way. You basically get four or five years of Social Security early, and then you can give yourself a pay bump when you turn 66 or 67. And this is an area that I think is really important, and and we have software, and we're able to run these illustrations for our clients as they come in to say, hey, does this make sense for you? Would you like to get income four years earlier and then give yourself a nice little pay bump in five years? So it can work, and it can be a really effective tool. Um. Well, something pops into my mind when we start talking about this, and I'll, I'm going to preface it by uh, doing like a little pop quiz. If I were mm-hmm. to say, hey, Emmanuel, who won the Super Bowl in 1987? Unless you are just a <laughs> diehard you know, football fan, you might not know. So right. how, would you, how would you find that out? Yep. Well, generally speaking, most people turn to – they, they turn to Google today, right? Yes. So it's, it's, yep. it's, they say, <laughs> right? If they go, hey, who won the 1980 or, yep. or Siri or Alexa mm-hmm. or whomever? Yep. Your phone, right? yep. <laughs> but you know what? I feel afraid and I suspect yep. that some people treat their retirement slash social security claiming decisions the same way. <laughs> They're like, oh, hey, yeah. Alexa. What should I do? Or when should I, or, hey, Google? <laughs> Let me just Google that, uh, you know, when should I? And they read four articles, and two of them are like from who knows what. How do you respond to someone that goes, oh, well, I read online that because our information is at our fingertips. Sure. Where's the downfall in, sure, let's learn a little bit about some terms and cola this and phrases that, but now you need to work with someone rather than just going to Google. Yeah, I I think maybe a good analogy for this would be, um, let's say um, you wanted to get in shape. You could probably Google and and look up, okay, if I exercise and if I diet, generally I I can get in shape. So for very general terms, I think the internet can be extremely useful. But you would not go to Google and say, how do I do brain surgery? And then suddenly, because of an article that you read, you suddenly yeah. know how to do brain surgery, right? So for something that is 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 um, uh, um, more detailed, for something that requires an area of expertise, and more importantly, something that is personalized to you, you would want to you would want more detail than just a general rule of thumb. Because yeah. again, to to the point that you brought up at the very beginning of the interview is that in most cases. Once you've made this decision, 
you cannot go back on it. And, and very few things in life are like that, right? Most of the time you can make some changes and do some different things, but this is one of those, you know, penultimate decisions that re- that really require you to get it right because it could cost you money down the line. And, and, and that's really what we want to help people avoid. And, you know, it, um, I thought of another analogy, I guess I'm, um, my wife tells the, my kids, you know, oh, there's dad giving another analogy, but I think they really bring things to light really sure. well. And so here, here's my next analogy. You know, okay, good. I'm not going to go to Google. I'm going to go talk to a financial professional. So, you know, my guy that sold me my whatever um, product, I'm just going to go. <laughs> and, and that might be a better step in Google, but but I feel like you would agree that you need to talk to someone that really specializes in social security. And, and here's my example. Um, uh, I've got in my home here, we've got Comcast here in Denver, Colorado. And, and so we've got, you know, f- two phone lines, at, you know, we're old school. We've got two, you know, land lines, one for my business, yeah. one for, um, you know, the family and then, you know, all the other things. Well, anyway, we had a new modem uh, update. And so the phones were swapped. Our our, you know, family phone uh, calls were coming into my business line and ringing. It's like something's wrong. So I called up Comcast and they're like, oh, well, we need to do this blah, blah. You know, it's like, and, uh, you know, you're on hold for nine hours and, and well, we need to leave this ticket. And I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. Um, let me call back, you know, later when I have some more time. And I had talked to like three different people on that call. And I called back after dinner and this guy goes, hold up. Um, you said that you've got two phone lines and the, the, our rep just came out and um, brought a new modem, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, why don't we try something real quick? Um, there's two gray um, phone line cords that go in the back of your modem, right? And I'm like, I think I know where you're going with this, which uh-huh. is the guy just put the one gray one in the one slot and the other and they're swapped. And he goes, I want you to just swap, just pull one out and put the other one and swap it and, uh, and test it. And boom, that fixed it. The point is mm-hmm. the other three people that I talked to at Comcast, the, the company, they didn't pick up on that. So this guy had specialized knowledge and he was like, Oh, I think this should work. Let's try it. And boom, there we go. So yes, you might feel like, okay, I'm not going to go to Google. I'm going to go to a financial professional. But even then you might really, really benefit from someone that's really dialed into the social security world. So talk a little bit about that and what that brings to the table. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's pivotal. Um, you know, as, as, as we sort of set off at the beginning of the conversation, it was, you know, very few people are expertise in these areas. And just because somebody is a financial professional, and they may be a good financial professional, but they do not necessarily have the required skill set to help you select your Social Security and your filing strategies. That's not in their wheelhouse. And in, in the same way that in your experience where you said this, you know, this person is a telephone expert, but they didn't know how to set up your specific need, right? Your modem needed somebody with a special required skill set. And in the very same way, what we do for our clients is specialized. We have that social security expertise, the filing strategies, um, the tools and the software to ensure that our uh, clients are, you know, making the best decisions that they can, because again, it is an irrevocable in most cases decision. And so that's where we've spent, uh, you know, the better part of 14 years of really becoming experts in that area. You know, for example, one of my designations is a CRP which stands for a Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor. And and really what that means in plain English is that I specialize in retirement. And so that designation is all about retirement and Social Security filing strategies and how to access uh, your retirement income appropriately and things of that nature. And so it's with those uh, designations and education that I can say plus experience that I can say we are experts in that area and, and, and coming to us for those needs is, uh, would be a wise decision as opposed to going to somebody who's just sort of a generalist. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, from the medical sense, if you had just some high end, you know, concern medically, you wouldn't really go to, you know, your uh, uh, family uh, doctor. You would go to a specialist right. because, you know, they've gone to extra years and years. So the same thing with your finances. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like, oh, shoot, I, I picked the wrong movie ticket this weekend. I guess we'll just go watch <laughs> the, you know, this is <laughs> long term and it can affect your, you know, and, and, you know, again, wrapping up this interview, I want to bring it back full circle to what you said at the beginning. It's not necessarily getting you more, you know, money. You know, who knows that that could happen, but it's more everything sure. else, comfort mm -hmm. and peace and time and you know, fulfillment in retirement. Well, if you made the wrong decisions and you're now sitting in retirement going, Well, guess I don't have a time machine to go back and change that. I wish I had done it the right mm -hmm. way. Getting that more could be more clarity, more peace of mind. So I really like that approach that you have. So wrap up with a kind of final thoughts and then what's the best way that people could reach out and learn more from you and your agency? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you, you know, one of the things that we really stress uh, during this interview is that, you know, as you approach retirement, don't be worried. Don't be concerned. You are not the first person that has come to retirement. It is personalized to you, but seek somebody that has that expertise in retirement because you want to get it right. You are going to be making decisions that will impact the next 25 to 30 years. And so uh, make sure that the person that you're speaking with has a defined process, has helped clients through retirement and helped them made, make the correct decisions for their retirement. And so, um, you know, if any of the listeners would like to get a hold of us, they can easily uh, find us on our website, which is Avena financialgroup.com. Avina is spelled A-V-I-N-A. -A. Um, they can certainly send an email to our uh, team email, which is your team at avinafg.com. Uh, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that they may have in terms of retirement income or social security planning or in any way that we could be of service. Uh, we would love to be able to help anybody that's approaching retirement. Well, Emmanuel, thank you so much for coming on. It was really great talking with you, seeing how you approach your clients and uh, how you serve them. So thank you for your time coming on today. Yeah, I appreciate it so much, Mike. Thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.